What's up, my friend? Welcome back to another video. And today, I just wanted to take a look at some of the most core um, orchestral style sample libraries that we need when starting out when producing for orchestral music, right? Uh, because as we know, there are so many choices on the market, it can so it becomes so easily overwhelming to look through all the forums and decide which library is right for us to watch all the walkthroughs and listen to all the demos. It could just be a complete time suck. So I kind of just wanted to streamline the process, give you a couple of recommendations, and hopefully set you on the right foot when it goes uh, when it comes to kind of selecting the right samples and the right libraries for you. And I'll give you my recommendations there as well. And before we really dive in and start demonstrating the exact libraries that I prefer, um, I want to give you my sample library buyer's guide as a completely free gift for checking out this video today. It's basically organized through all the different sections like strings, winds, brass, percussion. I've also listed out the different prices of the libraries that I personally use and the utility as well so you understand how I approach them and I've listed them all in a cohesive document that I would love to just give you um, again as a thank you for watching this video today so if you click the first link in the box below you can grab it totally free and uh, keep it on hand whenever you're interested in my thoughts on a specific library it might be in there all right so without further ado let's kind of dive on in the first type of orchestral library that I think is really important is an ensemble library and if you are you know, a more seasoned composer and you kind of already know what you want to write, the styles that you want to use and the workhorse libraries that you're, you personally prefer, then this might not matter as much for you. But for someone starting out, it's really important to get a sense of all the different things in one package because maybe they want to test things out. They want to explore what different instruments are included in the orchestra, right? And so an ensemble library or an all-in-one library is really nice because it it allows you to sample basically everything within the one package. And so you end up saving a lot more money compared to investing in dedicated uh, sections, right? So there's a lot of them on the market. Uh, for example, there's the Free Orchestra by Project Sam. You can get started there. There's the Orchestra Complete by Sonu Score and Best Service. There's uh, Nucleus by Audio Imperia. And there's just a whole bunch you can go into. But uh, the one that most people seem to love and I've used as well is Nucleus. And I just want to share, you, share with you a couple of examples here. So if we just take a look, this library in particular has quite a bit of content. You get not just sections, but you also get soloists. So in the soloist feature, you get solo violin, solo cello, solo flute, oboe, trumpet, and French horn. Let me actually go into the single patches so you can also see the articulations. So within the solo violin, for example, you get legato and sustains. Within the oboe, you also get legato and sustains. So there's no staccato, there's no shorts. Other libraries may offer this, but again, this library is intended to give you a taste of different things, right? So as a result, they're not going to be as deeply sampled as some dedicated section libraries, naturally. If we take a look at the sections, we have strings, woodwinds, brass, percussion, and even choir, which is uh, more, more optional, but the four core sections are there. So let's take a look at the woodwinds. We have the different sections here, flutes, oboes, clarinets, bassoons, which is really nice. And then you can see we have sustains, staccatissimos, and trills. In a dedicated library, you might have more uh, things like tremolos. You might have um, runs, you know, playable runs, patches, uh, multiphonics, even things like that. But again, this style of library is meant to just give you a taste. So let's hear the full ensemble patch. Let me go through these articulations here with these strings, and we'll have a quick listen. All right, so you get a sense of that there. So yeah, it's a pretty wide range because all the different sections are basically combined into the one patch. And so it's really easy to sketch things out and basically try out new ideas without being restricted uh, and having to load in the individual sections on their own. Uh, one other thing though, is that because ensemble libraries 
are not as deeply sampled, a lot of them do not contain legato as well. So legato tends to take up a lot of room and a lot of processing power just due to the nature of the way the engine works and adapts to your performances. So a lot of ensemble libraries do not contain legato. Nucleus actually does, especially for the solo instruments, which is really cool. But for the ensemble instruments, I don't believe it does. So um, yeah, let's actually, let, I, I just want to check because I don't want to misquote what is available here. So let's take a look at the violins. Oh, there is legato. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so a lot of libraries do not offer that uh, legato if it's an ensemble library, but uh, but Nucleus does, which is a little cherry on top. All right, let's quickly hear the brass. You can see there's sustains and staccatissimo. We don't have anything like rips or falls or uh, swells or anything like that. So again, a very basic patch, but great for sketching. So. Yeah, I just love the modern mix there on Nucleus' stuff and Audio Impure in general. They have their classic mix and their modern mix. The modern mix definitely has that more polished high-end feel to it, right? So you can kind of decide what you want. But yeah, really, really nice. And I just love also the dynamic range there in the in the lows to the higher dynamics. You can really hear that sear in the brass come through as well. Okay, so moving past the regular, uh, or moving past the ensemble libraries, then we go into the dedicated section. So now let's say you've uh, decided, yes, I want to invest in good sample libraries and I want dedicated sections. Now we start getting into the nitty gritty of deciding which ones are right for us. Now, the first one we need is strings, of course. So out of the four families, strings are kind of like the backbone of the orchestra in a lot of cases. And so my library of choice is Cinematic Studio Strings. So again, the main difference here is that the library only contains strings, but because of that, they are more deeply sampled. You get more articulations. All the focus from the company is focused on the strings. So you don't have to worry about anything else and you can just focus on developing your string section, you know? And then they can release separate libraries for other sections like solo strings or woodwinds and brass. Those are all individual purchases. So let's have a listen to the legato here. CSS is known for having one of the best and smoothest legatos on the market, but let's have a quick listen. There we go. That's just a quick look at the violins patch, but you see how much more in depth you can go in a dedicated string uh, library, right? So you get standard articulations, you can get some more esoteric things. Um, this library also has a really cool marcato articulation where you can play fast runs. There's also a spiccato overlay. So you can go even deeper in these dedicated sections. Uh, let me quickly show you the legato for the cellos and then we'll move on.
All right. So now, after your swing section has been established, then we move on to the woodwinds. And there are quite a few good choices on the market. There's VSL, there's uh, Berlin Woodwinds from Orchestral Tools. My library of choice usually is Cinematic Studio Woodwinds for general purpose woodwind writing nowadays. And so uh, I'll use the, uh, the, um, the solo instruments, and they also have dedicated ensembles as well recorded. So two bassoons, two clarinets, two flutes, and two oboes. And they also give you some extra ones with like doublers, like contrabassoon and pic piccolo. English horn and things like that. Um, but then if I want really exposed solos that I want to have really, really smooth legato and really, really clear um, performances, then I'll go with something like Soloist 1 and 2 from uh, Orchestral Tools as well. But let me just play here the solo flute and we'll hear the oboe as well. Yeah, the reason I enjoy this flute a lot is because of the really sweet tone and the kind of the progressive vibrato that kind of comes in when you play. Really, really beautiful. Okay, let's hear the oboe here as well. Yeah, very similar with the flute, very sweet tone, very plaintive and emotional. A lot of libraries kind of suffer with a more harsh nasal sound from the oboe. And a lot of it is actually dependent on the instrument itself. The performer can kind of play in a very sweet, romantic way, but if the instrument's not allowing for it, then it becomes a lot more difficult. But I feel like the ones in orchestral tools libraries and here in CSW are really, really beautiful. And so th this is my woodwind library of choice at the moment. So CSS and CSW for strings and woodwinds. And then for brass, I still stick with Cine brass from Cine samples, so beautiful. But again, this is the the uh, the fourth section you need because um, the brass section is equally important as the others, especially if you're doing more exciting pieces like adventure or trailer music, those kind of require that brassy emphatic sound, right? So the brass will kind of give you that. So let me just take a look here. We have Cine brass uh, core and Cine brass pro. These are some of the libraries I use all the time. Let me just show you from core, the trumpet ensemble articulations. So that was the trumpet ensemble and the solo horn. And the, the big calling card of this library is the actual sound and the, the sound quality that they've been able to capture in the Sony scoring stage. Just gorgeous. And it, it really stands true to this day. Um, now, do keep in mind, though, that because different libraries from different developers have different workflows, like different ways of using the library, that's something you might want to consider when choosing your library of choice. And that's a big plus why when you invest in all the different sections from one developer only, then most likely you're going to get the consistency across workflows between the different libraries, right? Um, whereas if you choose and mix and match uh, between different developers, then naturally the workflow might be a little bit different as in the case in Cine samples versus CSW. The articulations patch here in Cine samples is pretty interesting, right? You, you play lightly and you get a really tight staccatissimo sample. You play a little bit harder. It's more of a, uh, more of a, 
like a regular staccato, you know? And then if you play super hard, you get more from Mercado. If you press the pedal, you get sustains and legato. So it's it's a bit of a different way of working. A lot of times you can actually remap it yourself if you want to, but I've gotten kind of used to it. So that's just a little thing to consider there as well. And then finally we have percussion, of course, right? So let me just show you, um, I use uh, Cineperk from Cine Samples as well. So two libraries from Cinematic Studio series and two libraries from Cine Samples. This is the timpani and I'll show you the symbols as well. Yeah, so I really enjoy Cineperk because it's super comprehensive, but it also gives you the control that you need to create, you know, swells and rolls and hits and stuff uh, with the different instruments. So it's it's really smooth. And again, I've kind of gotten used to the workflow in this library as well. But it also comes with a really nice default out of the box Dennis Sands mix, which has been professionally curated for a multitude of applications. So really, really cool. Now, those are the five main sections. So ensemble libraries, strings, winds, brass, and percussion. But let's say you want to fill in your template or your you know library selection a little bit more. Well, then you can also add in things like harp and piano. And for those, I also use Cine Samples libraries. I use Cine Harps and Cine Piano. So let me just play the harp a bit and I'll, then I'll play the piano a touch here as well. just for butchering the piece but um you get a sense of what that harp sounds like it's super clean it's it's really beautiful um and not just the concert harp patch i also use the harp glissandi patch all the time so it's actually pre-recorded glissandi so it's a lot more realistic than kind of just running your fingers up and down the keyboard which is certainly an option but um, if you can use the pre-recorded ones then of course it's going to sound more natural and there's a whole bunch of other patches there as well and cine piano is still my favorite piano so let me play that a bit here Yeah, this piano just inspires me to play, you know? So that's just, <laughs> that's my choice. A lot of people recommend way more libraries than I do. Um, I think in terms of actual piano libraries that I use practically, I use one, 
and that's this one. So <laughs> there you go. But it's also cool because Cine Piano actually includes four different patches, you know, so it's not just this one, but there's also classical patch, which sounds a little bit further away, suited for classical pieces, of course. Cinematic is super up close and very intimate, almost has a sort of a felt sound, a really long tail too. And then Rock Studio Grand is great for those pop rock songs where you need that piano to cut through the mix. So it's like four pianos in one. Um, I just really love it. And uh, yeah, you know that I typically recommend only the libraries that I personally use. And if I had to really narrow it down to each section, these are the ones I would use. Um, so hopefully that gives you an idea of what I use and uh, clears things up just a little bit. Again, make sure that you are purchasing libraries very deliberately. Like you don't just wanna spend money on things that look really cool, but then as soon as you buy them, you download them, you try them out, you're like, oh, I didn't do my research. I should have looked into it a little bit more. It doesn't uh, act the way I wanted to. It doesn't sound the way I wanted to. And then you just, you just feel discouraged, right? And we don't want that. So these are just my personal preferences. If you wanna write music in particular styles, make sure you do your research, watch the demos, watch the walkthroughs of the ones you're interested in. But um, these are just my personal choices, okay? So again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, if you wanna download my sample library bars guide for your own personal uh, reference, if again, if you're interested in libraries, not just these ones, but uh, my whole collection that I use on a regular basis, I wanna give it to you absolutely free. Just click the first link below and you can download it as my gift to you. Um, refer to it anytime you want to. Maybe you're interested in certain thoughts about a library that I use, or maybe you're, again, looking for a new library and you just wanna see if my thoughts there are there in the guide, um, you can certainly use that for that purpose as well. But anyway, I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you again, and I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.